It's on, starts now. Basketball brawl, how a bitter rivalry led to this scary scene. Former college coach Rick Patino gets a new look that's creating some controversy. Then the latest TikTok challenge that's too hot to handle. It's on now. This is how I would imagine that would go. Yeah, I think that's pretty much how it's been going so oh far. Happy Hump Day, everybody. It's Wednesday, January 22nd. I'm Jennifer Palumbo, along with Seth Phillips. Our show yesterday lasted, I believe, under 60 seconds. So we're going to see if we can go so, a little so longer far, so today. Good. We're still here. <laughs> we're still here Nothing for now. Nothing has changed. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, talk about uh, Hot Sauce Day. Today's National Hot Sauce. I didn't know that until literally just about... What, uh, 15 minutes ago when Chris Goodman said it. So uh, what I did was go into the back, in the back of the studio, which I always keep myself a bottle of Tabasco sauce. Always being a, a good Louisianian boy, you always have a, hot, a bottle of Tabasco Is that your you. brand? Of course it is. I grew yes. up 30 minutes away from where this w is made, okay, in, in uh, Avery Island, Louisiana. And uh, so what I like to do is, you know, obviously put it on all the food that I eat. I've put it on ice cream before. Really? Oh, yeah. Anything, grits, uh, you know, uh, pot roast, anything you can name, it, I'll put Tabasco sauce on. Is there on. anything you won't put it on? You know, that's a good question. That's, that's a better question because I really don't know anything that I wouldn't put it on. I brought my leftover birthday cake. Will you put it on a piece of that? Yes. Okay. 100%. Okay. Bring that in. We'll do it. But what I also <laughs> like to do is whenever my mouth is getting a little dry, I like to go ahead and just... Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Take a little shot of some Tabasco sauce. <laughs> and, it, and it gets me, you know. Opens up your starts, sinuses. To, you're yeah, feeling good, like it, yeah, it really clears out my sinuses. It starts to make my mouth water a little bit. You want to hit? Come on. Yeah, I, get, I am not a spicy that. person. I am not a hot sauce person. <gasps> oh, my goodness. When you know what's going to happen, I'm probably going to get it on my face instead of <laughs> just. Well, you know, that, it, it is hot sauce day. There you go. And? <laughs> <laughs> is there water? Yeah, I got you something in your cup right there. <laughs> so anyway, National Hot Sauce Day. Go pick up your favorite at the store and, uh, yeah, have fun with it. But regardless, so a uh, busy morning for us other than yes. our Tabasco shots. Uh, we had a, uh, we were out and shot something for uh, Super Bowl Sunday, which we will air next week. And on today's show, Toby Brown is live from La Rosa's newest location in Southland Drive. Excuse me, in Lexington, <laughs> and we're, we're trying our hand at improv. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Ah, oh, yes, looking forward to all of that it's today. Be a good time. Yes, well, it was, of course, a big night for the Cats. First, the UK football team getting lots of love at the game at Rupp Arena with Cash Daniel, Calvin Taylor, and TJ Carter showing off the Belk Bowl trophy. I can feel this hot sauce coming up on me. Love it. 15th ranked Kentucky beat Georgia in Athens and then got to play the Bulldogs again last night at Rupp. The Cats dominated this time, winning 89 to 79 and improved to 14 and 4 overall and 5 and 1 in the SEC. Four Cats with double digit scoring led by sophomore Ashton Hagens, who had 23 points. This was probably their best offensive performance so far of the season. Kentucky hits the road next for the Big 12 SEC Challenge. The Cats take on <laughs> Texas Tech Saturday in Lubbock. Tip-off is 6 p.m. on ESPN. So, All right. good night for the Wildcats. Yes, it's going to be uh, really good for yes. them. Okay, but uh, you've obviously heard by now the all-out brawl. Yes, this was not a good night for these two teams. During the Kansas State-Kansas game, uh, they were playing in Lawrence. The final seconds of the game, benches cleared and punches <laughs> thrown. Thank you, Catherine, for the water. Yes. It all started <laughs> after Kansas forward Silvio D'Souza blocked a shot by Kansas State's uh, Dewan Gordon, I think I got that right. The, the, D'Souza then stood over Gordon, who was lying on the court. The video of the incident shows D'Souza picking up a stool. You can see it right there. Yeah, yep. right there. And an assistant coach taking it away from him. The ugly scene lasted about 30 seconds. Kansas won the game 81 to 60. Over before it started, but come on. This was just awful. Absolutely and, and so, unnecessary. So, so, you know, it, it's a blowout. So we're watching it right here. Yeah. You know, he goes down. It's. Uh, D'Souza swats away the layup and then is standing over him taunting him. Right. Everybody just comes running. You know, it's 
of course, depending whether you're a Kansas or Kansas State fan is also your perspective about this as well, because sure. Kansas fans are saying, oh, but he wasn't going to throw the stool. He just dropped it. Well, there's an angle that pick it up in the first place. There's an angle that shows the assistant coach taking it out of his right. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see, though, what the suspensions are oh, for this, yeah. because, you know, be they're saying it could be like double digit games, not just like should one half against. Well, and, and then where they were where they were fighting. I mean, it's not like they, they chose to, but in the ADA seating section right, right. behind the goal. You know, so there were people there who were could not there. move, fans who could not move right. quickly out of the location that got trampled and, and it was, were, it's, it, just it's just a terrible situation horrific all Horrific look. Yeah. It really is. And ESPN College Game Day is supposed to be at Kansas on Saturday. And, so and, it'll be interesting to see how many players will not be in that game. D'Souza had some issues in the in the past few years as yes. well. So, I mean, that on top of that is going to just compound on this. So, yeah. yeah, you're right. Long suspensions probably. Yep. All right. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at what's on now. Talk about Two-Face. Ryan McGuire created this label for the Riff Patino bourbon and shows the two sides of Rick Patino. One is the cleaner side when he coached for Kentucky, of course. Then there's the other side showing a little more haggard Patino with Louisville Cardinal basketball players throwing money at a stripper. If you want to purchase a bottle with this label, you have to know the right people because it's not available on store shelves. Yeah, so, I, can so I guess why. I didn't realize, yes, yeah, so you can buy your own barrel and then you can put whatever you want on it. So <laughs> this isn't something, you know, that you're going to be able to buy in the stores, but of course, Kentucky and Louisville fans are divided. The Louisville fans are really upset about oh, Kevin I'm, Ware I'm, down there in the corner in the wheelchair because he suffered that horrific oh. injury. Um, but, you know, and then Kentucky fans, you know, yeah, you know it's just the rivalry is it's so a, it's, it's a heated bitter. rivalry. I mean, it's never ended like the Kansas Kansas State game, and let's it's hope it never does. It's going to be interesting to see if somebody from the Louisville fan base responds and, and comes up with something and else. Comes up yeah. with something else. And of course, now too, Throwboy Tees has a T-shirt with that image on it, so okay. that you know fans who want to there you keep go. celebrating can do that way. Mm -hmm. Well, a clip of former Vice President Joe Biden taking a selfie with an elevator operator has gone viral. The presidential candidate was on his way to a meeting. Biden shared the video on his Twitter page. It has since received more than 186 thousand views no, just sweet. because of a selfie. That's sweet. Yes, it is. Well, Will Smith is a superstar with a five star rating. We're talking about Lyft. Hmm. That's right. Lyft, the ride sharing service. Will Smith went undercover as a driver as part of a promotion called Bad Boys for Lyft, a play on words that cross-promotes no, Lyft with Smith's new movie, Bad Boys for Life. Uh -huh. So, I mean, imagine getting into a Lyft and Will Smith is your driver. The passengers, very surprised by their celebrity driver, <laughs> with one so shocked that she yelled some words that we can't show, share with you Naturally. on TV. But not only did the experience lift their spirits, but the passengers also received a free year of Lyft That's awesome. rides. But I mean, you get into the car. And Will like, Smith what? just seems like the friendliest person yes. on earth. He looks like he's so chill to be around <laughs> and just has a good time no matter what he's doing. And so getting in a Lyft with him, I think that would be so much fun. That would be great. And it's not easy to get a five-star rating. So clearly no. he's a good passenger yeah, as well. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, a stray dog jumped into action recently to help a group of children safely cross a street. It happened Friday in the former Soviet Republic of Georgia. The video has become an internet sensation, and you can see why. The pup was Aww. caught on amateur video barking at cars. <laughs> Listen, get out of the way. They're not even stopping. They're yeah. crossing. <laughs> yeah, as kindergartner students tried to uh, cross a busy street, the children were in the crosswalk with an adult, but not every driver stopped. And when it was safe, the self-appointed crossing guard walked at the last steps with the group. The person who shot the scene said the stray is named Kersha and lives in the neighborhood. Good little dog there. Love that. Yes. All right, well, this is kind of interesting. NFL executives have rolled out designs for the 2020 draft in Las Vegas. And as you might guess, the plans are both ambitious and lavish. This is artists' renderings of what the NFL Draft Complex will look like. The main stage and NFL Draft experience are set up next to Caesars Forum. But get this, the red carpet stage will be in front of the iconic Bellagio fountains on top of the water. <laughs> With draft prospects uh, prospects arriving and leading by boat, fans can attend the draft for free, watch the selections of all seven rounds over three days. The NFL draft experience features games, autograph sessions, pro shops, special performances. It starts April 23rd and wraps up on the 25th. So, you know, you find out you've been drafted by one team, you're on the boat, you're going across the water, and they're like, oh, wait, there's a trade. Yeah, well, and then and they turn the boat around and take you on back. I might be, I might be <laughs> overreaching here, but I think the boat, crossing part is kind of an homage to uh, Phantom of the Opera. 
You know, yes. where uh, the Phantom yes. is, is rowing Christine, you know, to his dungeon. Yes. That'd be even better if they're rowing. Yeah, yeah I like that and like <laughs> singing some tunes. But I also like my favorite part was the Lego rendering yes. of the stage and the Bellagio <laughs> fountain and all that. I think there was even a little Lego guy and he yeah. was like, I won, I'm going to this. A little Joe Burrow. I'm going, yeah, a little Joe Burrow going to Cincy. And it's, yeah, it, it was really cool to see. All right, a New York teen wants to change the day of the Super Bowl. Speaking hmm. of which, 16-year-old Frankie Ruggieri has a legitimate reason who wants to come up or who wants to get up on Monday morning after such a late night watching the big game. Makes sense. Frankie feels Saturday would be better so people can sleep in on Sunday. He started a change.org petition to get <laughs> others behind his idea. Starting with the 2021 Super Bowl, similar efforts in the past have been unsuccessful, largely because of the NFL believes the ratings and revenue will be stronger by keeping its big game on Sundays. <sighs> I actually support this. I mean, as oh, well, everyone we work, supports we this. We work on Monday. It's never going to happen. But you know what? Kudos to him for taking a stand and trying to everyone, get it moved. Everyone but all the owners want this to happen. But yes. They're all like, oh, we need to line our pockets with more money because we're yeah. not making enough. So let's go ahead and keep it on Sunday when the uh, the, 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 the everyone's watching. But I'm sure. like, people are still going to watch on Saturday. I, uh, yeah, exactly. The, exactly. The, the college football national championship is on a Monday. Now, I get that's because of the NFL, but still, it's I know, on but a I, Monday. I don't like that either. No, of course not. But I'm just saying, if we can have we can have it on any day, people are still going to watch. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. I don't think there's any, any change. No. Well, a viral challenge on the popular social media app TikTok has sparked concern from fire officials. Yeah, talk about it. It involves using the plug part of a phone charger, partially inserting it into a wall outlet. Okay, already a red flag. And then sliding a penny down the wall onto the exposed prongs. Fire officials warn it's an unsafe use of electricity. CNN's Julie McDonald reports. It doesn't take much to be electrocuted, fatally electrocuted, just by an outlet in a, in a, in a wall socket. Firefighters rushed to Plymouth North High School Tuesday to investigate whether this scorched and burned outlet posed a threat to students. Two students had uh, plugged in a cell phone charger and dropped a penny behind it causing it to short out. Turns out the prank is the latest social media challenge. Here's a YouTube video the state fire marshal sent to all departments. Yeah. There was a similar incident in Holden, and a student at Westford High is now facing charges for starting a fire. The electricity propels that, the charger and the coin, now the coin is molten metal at this point, outwards. Uh, it could easily get you in the face, get you in the eye, it could cause blindness, and it could cause you, the clothing to catch on fire. Fire chiefs are asking parents to talk to their kids about these foolish viral challenges. They're careless and can put everyone at risk. The other issue can be that um, you do some damage to electrical wiring behind the wall, and a fire could be undetected and burning in the walls, you know, endangering everyone that's in the building. This is just one of those, okay, you know, just don't. Don't. I'm like, what... Are, are we not stimulating our children enough these days? I mean, we're really, what is it? What is well, it that, that, that they're looking at this and thinking, oh, and, that and, would be fun. And it's more than that because my children like TikTok. You know, they, they laugh at the videos. They're not going to go stick a penny, you know, go. You'd think, uh, but I mean, these. Well, I, th I there guess are maybe I need to talk to them when I get home. Who are, are watching these videos and <laughs> yeah. like, that seems like a great idea. Yeah. I'm going to go do that. Don't try that Terrible. at home. Okay, it's lunchtime. I am hungry. I've got my hot sauce and mm -hmm. no food. So Toby is at one of my favorite spots today. That's right. Let's hope she makes something good. We'll talk. Have a break.